Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Now, I do have to mention something. Uh, this match was recorded outside of my home. I did it with like a separate uh, like a separate capture card, separate PC, etc. And uh, honestly, I should have checked the audio better because the audio was very much unusable, <laughs> which is very unfortunate. Um, I should have checked that a little bit better, but we're doing post commentary a bit uh, for this I'm not gonna go too in-depth about stuff, but like I will try to go uh, Through everything All right, as you see uh, We have like the Landris. He brought Landris. I was actually quite ex uh, did not expect him to bring the Rotom uh, Being very real because I thought Rotom was like Gonna be not used at all, but I just let with my Moltres because Moltres was a fine Pokemon, a fine pick, uh, gonna be able to put in a lot of work because the only real resist to Flamethrower is the Haxorus. So Flamethrower hits about everything here. Uh, Clark, of course, the Curum is gonna do a lot of work as well. And honestly, uh, I was quite excited for this to see this because um, I thought, okay, we definitely have a chance here. As you see, cool ass poses. Let's bring it on. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> also, uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I forgot who it was, but someone got the nicknames question right. They know where the nicknames come from. It is indeed from. I forgot it myself. Yeah, I'll just put it on screen. All right, but as you see, he leads off with the Rotom, which I did not expect, but which makes me believe this is like a Scarf Rotom. Uh, because for to have a fast Volt Switch to be sure that I, like, that I could like chip the Zapdos Galarian if it wasn't a uh, Scarf version, like for example, if it was banned. So yeah, that's completely fine. I always have like Kyurem switching because Kyurem uh, is naturally very bulky. But this is a Specs Curum. But the fun part is we have our Specs plus Roost as well. So we should always be a switch in for this Rotom. Now, as you see, Volt Switches on my Curum does absolutely zero. Nothing even. And goes to Maleficent. Now, here I was thinking like, okay. Uh, this my this takes definitely takes an Ice Beam. Like it should do around 70 to 80. But yeah. Honestly, I wasn't sure and like I felt like Diancie was like my least valuable member at the moment uh, It wasn't doing that. It was nice for Weavile, but like it wasn't the greatest of all of them, of the, all of them. I felt like the Zoomerill put in a little bit more work and stuff. So I just went hard into Cynthia to be able to chip this with like a Diamond Storm for example As you see it goes for the future side. So future side is gonna hurt a lot we don't have a dark. We do have a dark type, but like we can't risk switching it in on Dazzling Gleam. Uh, so we are just going for Diamond Sword to get this as low as possible, so that we may knock it out with an Ice Beam. The good thing about Curum as well, we didn't even need Freeze Dry. We could have. We can just spam Ice Beam with the team that he has brought as well. As you see, it goes for Dazzling Gleam as well. So yeah. Now Dazzling Gleam plus Future Sight might knock me out. And honestly, I was considering here just Moonblasting to see uh, if he was like a Salt Vest or something. But they switched out. It was a good play. Um, they switched out to Discovery. And I'm just here Moonblasting. And as you see, it does quite a bit, honestly. And then Future Side comes in. And as you see, that is chip. Like, that is a lot of damage. So that makes me believe like the Hatterie was probably max special attack, max HP probably. I'm guessing it's not like a Trick Room variant where it's like, or like Calm Mind, I believe. Uh, I just switched to my Moltres because Moltres is always a good switch him for the Skarmory. Like it can have Toxic and stuff, but like honestly, do I mind? I don't really. But very well read by my opponent. They went for the double switch into the Rotom making sure that I am not be doing this unpunished. But yeah, I can go again to my, uh, like to my, I forgot that in his name, uh, to my Curum, uh, which he probably will Volt Switch probably back to Maleficent. Now this Maleficent is at 70%. Uh, well, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, like it's 60, 70, between 60, 70, I believe. And I can just knock it out. I should be able to knock it out with a choice pick size B. 
quite easily, so. There was one thing I did not consider though. And uh, I'm, I'll be I'll be right there just telling you when this Maleficent switches in. Now, I calc this, this was like 60%, so I should be able to kill it with an Ice Beam. Uh, pretty much guaranteed. Now, I didn't think of Assault Vest. I completely forgot that Assault Vest was an item. I'll be very real. So, uh, as you will see in just a second, it's not gonna kill. <laughs> yeah, it lives and goes for the Dazzling Gleam with like a Mollus Nature that is gonna take out Clark and that really sucks because that Rotom is looking hella scary suddenly. <laughs> like actually. The good thing is I can go, uh, I, am, I have the possibility to go Dorothy again or possibly Laurent, uh, Laurent or to just knock off Iron Head, honestly, anything that I want. But I ultimately, I decided to go Moltres, because Moltres, with a U-turn, I should be able to kill this. Uh, and making sure that I get my momentum up, even when this thing should, like, some, for some reason, try and survive. Um, it'd be fine. Just like, but doesn't, just sacks it, which is completely fine for me. Just, so just U-turn, well, for the momentum. And the hat read is down. Hat read being down is one thing, but it's not really good. Uh, then we go to our Zapdos, and yeah, I mean, it's a Scarf Zapdos. We do have, uh, what's it call it? Throat Chop to hit this Rotom, but uh, it's not gonna kill. That's the issue. So it's way too, its HP is too high. For me to be able to kill that, so uh, I do have to U-turn here. Because it's only an 80 base, it's an 80 base move, but it's not going to kill. Like, I don't want to risk it. Uh, and now he knows I'm Scarf as well. So, expecting him to just Volt Switch. I need to pick out a sack, and honestly, I'm just sacking my Diane C. Because Diane C, not... Like, is really low, it's not the greatest switch to stuff anymore, so it's fine. I can just let this die. The good thing about this Diancy as well, though, this gives his Haxorus not an option to, like, set up on me. Which is always great, of course. Uh, which I really want to try and avoid. So he goes Weavile, Weavile, of course, uh, being able to knock me out since I'm at 6%, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and um, we can just uh, boom blast. Cause like honestly, we're just gonna die anyway. Also, he he probably switched his Karmri earlier at first my Diancy, expecting like mystical fire, but nope, wasn't me. Not today. All right, so I can go Abigail. Uh, I can go. F I could go for close combat, or I could go for a U turn. But like it's <sighs> like honestly, I feel like Dorothy is the better play. Because like if he's choice banded, for example, he has a chance to get burned. U-turn would do a lot, and like fleet, like fleet throw is also still a solid play as well. But like I'm just gonna, like, what does he do? I like even if he goes Haxorus, I will have the momentum, which is really good. Him going for knockoff, chance for burn, uh, like triple axel, chance for burn, etc., etc. So yeah, as you see. He does switch, does switch to the Haxorus as well, nice and shiny. But now, I need to tell you this, even when this thing Dragon Dances, my Zapdos is going to be able to kill it. Because that U-turn damage is just enough. Because like I calc this beforehand, that U-turn is enough for me to be able to CC with Abigail and get a, sure f a kill for sure. Which is, honestly, in general, just really, really nice. Alright, let's go Abigail. Like, uh, at level 50, of course, it's less of a roll. Like, when it's level 100, it's a roll, but because you're, we're playing with level 50, so the HPs are lower, this is actually, like, pretty much guaranteed to kill. Unless he has, like, uh, ungodly... HP investments that I wouldn't know about, you know? But like, it was good for me to keep up the momentum. He might be able to switch to Rulem, but if he does, yeah, that's that's really it. Because like, I can't risk it. Can't risk this thing trying to set up. So I just CC being able to kill this, which is so amazing. Like, actually. 
So this thing goes down. Nice, nice. So we got two Pokemon down, which is Hatterene and the Haxorus. Haxorus was probably one of, if not the most scary Pokemon uh, for me personally. And it goes to Rotom. Now, I'm still <sighs> afraid because like Scarf, Rotom, Volt Switch, and minus uh, Spadef now is going to do so much. And like, I have three weak po Pokemon, three weak Pokemon to uh, Electric, which is not great at all. So what I choose to do is go Lauren in case he goes for a T Volt instead of like uh, a Volt Switch, and like honestly, it's my only play really because like I don't want to sack my Weavile just uh, my Azumarill because for the Weavile and stuff. And as you see, it does quite a bit, but doesn't two hit kill. So that's actually good information for us to to have. And now he can switch in Landris, uh, but he can switch in Hiskari. Hiskari, of course, again, it's not a switch in against my uh, Moltres. Now I'm just gonna go Moltres again, because I know Volt Switch won't kill Laurent yet, and like I don't risk as mu that much right now with this play. Like he might double switch to his Rotom, but I still feel like this was the play that I should have done. Um, and because now that the Haxorus is gone, I have free flamethrowers everywhere. Flamethrower is super duper free. Uh, as you see, I'm checking it as well. Yeah, like even the Landorus, not really, it won't really appreciate that. It has a chance to burn as well. You don't want to risk that. As you see, flamethrower, and we do manage to knock out the Skarmory, which is also very nice, but that means the Rotom is coming in again. And we do have our Bishop, but like, Bishop is low. <laughs> well, the most important Pokemon for us to keep in the back is definitely the, um, whatchamacallit, the Zapdos. Right, as you see, Gaia the Landorus comes in, and, well, honestly, I didn't know what to do really here. I was considering all my possible plays. Like Abigail was still full health, could take out, could take out the Weavile because it's Scarf. Uh, and I was thinking of just going Makoto as well. I was thinking of Lauren, but like I couldn't risk it. Like I need those three. So I just went for a flame through. They go for a rock slide. Now, Stone Edge would have killed me, but I'm max defense Moltres, and I knew I would survive one. But they flinched me, and I was so sad. So I just went to sack this, but second rock slide. I dodge, flee through it. About 40, all right. So I'm like, okay, I can't switch in. Or can I, because like, is he Scarf? Like, I don't know. He goes for another rock slide, misses again. Flee through it. Guess what? We have 80. So he is 20% and lower. I could keep my Dorothy right now, but I'm just gonna sack it. Cause like, it's the safest thing for me to do. Uh, this lander is very low and Dorothy did its work. Honestly, if you still underestimate uh, Moltres, it's so good. It's like actually good. Now, I thought he would be like Scarf maybe, maybe he would be like Double Scarf or something. Cause uh, going for a Rock Slide. Cause like, if you're playing a Rock Slide, why, why would you play Rock Slide? Like, to get flinches, right? And maybe higher accuracy. So, I would guess that you're Scarf. Now, the funny thing is, somehow my Lauren outsped the Landorus. And to this day, I still don't know how. <laughs> I generally don't know. Like, I am an adamant uh, Bishop. So, he was like zero speed, but like. No HP? I don't know. I just don't know. Now this Weaver might be able to just uh, low kick me, so I'm just gonna go my Azumarill, because honestly, it's my safest play. Azumarill kinda safe, you know. Rocks suck, but you know. Patati, patata. Alright, as you see, Makoto is just like a funny set, I feel. Because like, we made this for the Verizion. In mind, because the Verizion with the rock move obliterated us. Like, actually. It was like a sub, leaf blade, stone edge, uh, close combat, Verizion, that shit. We would die. Like, we would actually lose. Uh, go for the Whirlpool. I miss, unfortunately. Uh, but, like, after those rocks, I misses. I don't mind that much. 
I'm just gonna go for protect just to get like another little bit of my HP back and then I wanna see what this Rudon goes for. So Rudon goes for Shadow Ball. All right, so I'm like, wait, did he lock himself in, in Shadow Ball? Is he like Specs? Not like... No, cause like I remember, no, the Curum didn't take that much damage, so it's not Specs. So, but like he scarfed them, scarfed Shadow Ball. And I'm like, I don't mind this then. Like I'll, I'll just the Whirlpool again. It's like, I don't mind the Shadow Balls at all. Like I didn't know why Shadow Ball of all things, but like I was fine with it. I would get residual damage with Whirlpool. This is what I want. I want this to slowly but surely die. Now this is this the next part is quite boring. It's like it's just it's Paris song man. I protect another shadow ball. Another leftovers. Yummy yummy. Always eating those apples. As you see, this Rotom is getting low. I'm pretty sure that my uh, Dark Move can kill the Rotom now, which is really nice. Uh, goes for yet another Shadow Ball. And I go for Whirlpool. I miss, unfortunately. But it happens. Lefties. Nom, 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 nom. Alright, Fuse Man is pretty low. I'm, I just went for a Whirlpool. I should have protected, in, in all honesty. It's like this thing, keeping this thing healthy is way better for Weaval. But I go for a Whirlpool, miss again. Well, it happens, guys. Like, it's just. This is the battle of the misses, you know? So I just go for Protect, get like another bit of HP. I'm at 75 HP, I'm super low. And like, uh, yeah, but like the good thing is like this room is almost dead. So I'm pretty sure I can just scarf Brave Bird uh, to make sure. Uh, there's only three minutes left in the battle and I'm like, okay, but like as long as I'm more Pokemon and more HP, I'm fine. But then he switches Moose. He has Volt Switch. Why does he have Volt Switch? And I'm like, wait, he's not Scarf? He's not Scarf, and I didn't see that coming, and I, I was flabbergasted, I was absolutely flabbergasted, because like, I need this Azumarill, I could have been Volt Switched it a long time ago, but he probably didn't want the Azumarill to live, and just then be able to Whirlpool against the Weavile, because Weavile definitely has no option against the uh, Azumarill then. So, I could just go for a knockoff or Sucker Punch, like, expecting this thing to be slower, I like a bulky version if it has Plane Split, but it doesn't, it's faster, I should have just Sucker Punched. And that was like a misplay, a big misplay on my part. Because um, we saw Shadow Ball, Volt Switch, Plane Split, could have been Will-O-Wisp, but like Sucker Punch was still my better play, certainly with the timer running out like this. And then this thing comes in, I need to go to Abigail, uh, just to make sure he doesn't uh, do anything, and like... I know it's I know it's probably banned, so I'm just clicking U-turn because I can't risk it. I can't risk it with that thing. I can't risk it with Uvile. Does switch out? Like I I was I was almost tempted to uh, use uh, Throat Shop, but like I couldn't. I actually couldn't. I was way too low. All right, and then I go to Makoto again. I can just sack that and then just be able to be sure. I like Brave Bird twice and should, it should kill the Weavile and the uh, Azumarill. Like I was very scared. But like there's only 40 seconds left and like because of my Azumarill being this healthy, I can just wait. I can just wait out because like it's my best play. Like I can go for a double Brave Bird. Like I definitely can but like I'm trying to get a W here as well, so I take my time. It sucks, but I'm taking my time. Um, but yeah, Brave Bird twice should definitely have killed these two, uh, like the Weaver. Like, unless if the Weaver was Sash, but like, uh, my opponent told me, like, 
and like I remember him telling me something, but like he was not Sash. I think he was banned. I don't remember if he even said that to me. I'm trying to recall. Uh, but yeah, I just yeah. There we go. So I won thanks to timer, but like I'm like I counted it as well. Brave Bird would definitely kill the Weavile. Uh, we Brave Bird did about uh, 96 point to uh, to 113, which means that's uh, that's like that's like an 80 percent chance to Uku. 80 percent. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to check out my opponent and. See you guys the next time. Bye-bye.